Welcome back to the Top Notch Documentaries YouTube channel. In today's Serial Killer Series video, I shall be covering the disturbing case of serial killer Joseph Edward Duncan III. The date was May 16th of 2005, when a neighbour had showed up to the Groney family household to pay 13-year-old Slade Groney money for his time spent mowing the front yard the morning prior. He knocked on the door, but received no answer. A dog could be heard, barking inside the house. Not unusual. What was unusual was the cars belonging to Brenda Groney and her partner, Mark McKenzie, were still sitting in the driveway. Why weren't they answering the door if they were clearly at home? They had hosted a barbecue on May 15th and there had been many friends gathered at the home to celebrate. Nine-year-old Dylan and eight-year-old Chester Groney had both been enjoying the barbecue in company of their friends. Little did anyone know, there was a deeply disturbed predator fixated on the two youngest Groney family members. He had been stalking the family and their movements for several days. The family household just outside of Coeur d'Alene, a city in northern Idaho, was a safe place. It had a low crime rate. Unfortunately, the area would soon be remembered as a place where an awful situation unfolded. The neighbour felt uneasy about the situation and made the smart decision to call the police. On arrival, they made entrance into the house and uncovered a brutal scene. Three deceased individuals were located in the house. Brenda, Mark and Slade were found bludgeoned to death. Brenda and Slade were in the kitchen, with Mark being found in the living room. Slade, despite his injuries, had seemingly managed to attempt to leave the house. There was a blood trail into different rooms. The blood was Slade's. Authorities became alerted to the fact that two groany family members, two young children, were not at the scene. They had been taken. Immediately, an Amber Alert was issued across the country. The case became huge, with media reporting on the out-of-the-blue murders, which had occurred in such an unlikely area. The theories about who had murdered the three family members and kidnapped Shasta and Dylan had police convinced that this was some sort of personal retaliation because of an unpaid debt to criminals. Deborah and Mark both had ingested substances prior to their murders. However, why would a group murder three family members and then kidnap their two youngest children? It didn't make any sense. Investigators turned to the theory that it was presumably a lone offender who may have or may not have known the family. The biological father of Slade, Shasta and Dylan was looked into as a possible suspect. Had there been any tension between him and Mark? This theory didn't seem to fit though. He loved his children and had no reason to perpetrate such an evil crime. As the days passed, tips and new updates circulated, but it wouldn't be until July 2nd that the case gained a massive tip leading to an arrest. Denny's customers noticed a man walking with a young girl who resembled Shasta Groney. A billboard with details of her and her brother's disappearance had been what made them question the girl's identity. Similarly, Denny's employees had already picked up on her despondent demeanour. She had been sitting opposite the man with her face mostly facing toward the ground. She seemed to be in serious despair and Denny's employees knew that they must intervene before the man left with the little girl. 911 was called and police arrived on the scene. The man was questioned and arrested once the little girl revealed her true identity to a Denny's waitress. It was Shasta Groney. The man was cuffed. His name was Joseph Edward Duncan III. In his vehicle, police would find night vision goggles, a 
camcorder and a shotgun. Dylan was nowhere in sight. Where was he? Shasta would soon reveal the whole terrifying ordeal. Forced to relive the terror of the night of May 15th. But before I cover that, let's get into some of the sinister backstory of Joseph Edward Duncan III. Joseph Edward Duncan III was seemingly a predator from a young age. At age 15, he would be charged with rape of a nine-year-old boy at gunpoint. He'd be apprehended not long after, but would be back on the street due to his young age and would end up reoffending time after time. Years later, in another dreadful crime, which partly matched his MO for the Groney case, he kidnapped and raped a 14-year-old boy at gunpoint. For this, once again, he was caught. This time, he got a much more severe punishment. He got sentenced to 20 years in prison. It was 1994 when he was released, six years early. His parole came with a condition that he not engage with minors, which is insane, given his already predatory predilections towards young children. His mind already too far gone to be saved from a life of causing others misery. He would come out of prison with a new goal for his life. This was, in his words, to harm society as much as I can, then die. He blamed society rather than himself for his actions and I'm surprised that he was even released based on his repetitive, violent behaviour towards children. Still, he was released. Two years after his parole, he violated by using marijuana, which he did later on go on to say was because he was paranoid about two unsolved child murders at the time that he'd committed. And then he was caught in possession of a firearm. Once again imprisoned for a month, and it wouldn't be long before he got out again. His twisted worldview likely culminated in the murder various missing children from different states around this time. The pointless restrictions forced upon him were a joke. Anyone who had seen his previous criminal history would have seen instantly that this guy was a complete scumbag and should have already been locked up for eternity years before. Duncan continued his offending and made it out for the last time on April the 5th 2005, after posting a $15,000 bond on a case for molesting another young boy the year before, Duncan was back into society and wasn't interested in attending court to protest his innocence in the case. He'd been planning a trip through different states and had more evil intentions in his sick mind. This is where the night vision goggles come in along with the camcorder. Duncan purchased these and rented the Grand Jeep Cherokee, which he would be later captured with. He then stole some license plates to put on the Jeep. An arrest warrant was issued on June 1st because he didn't show up to court for the start of his trial. He evidently wasn't all that bothered by the ramifications of this. He had made a mockery of the court system and knew that he could get away with his crimes. Travelling through different states, he ended up in Idaho, just eight miles away from the Groney family residence. Driving through neighbourhoods, he stumbled upon the family, and from a distance, he observed them. Now, let's get back to Shasta's terrifying account of the night of May 15th. Shasta was awoken by her mother, along with Dylan, the two young children were led by their mother into the living room where they witnessed Duncan standing with a shotgun in their home over Mark and Slade who were restrained with zip ties. He led Shasta and Dylan outside, put them in his car and then returned to the house where he murdered each family member with a claw hammer. He likely used the ruse of a home invasion robbery so as to not stab a fight with Mark and Deborah. They wouldn't have anticipated the aftermath. Shasta and Dylan were then kidnapped by Duncan and subjected to sexual abuse for seven weeks. They were kept at numerous campsites in the mountains until Shasta managed to persuade Duncan to take her home. 
she managed to bond with her captor as a way to survive the ordeal. Thankfully, Duncan spared Shasta. Unfortunately, Dylan wouldn't be so lucky. His badly burned body was found on July 4th, two days after Shasta was rescued. He had been fatally shot and then burned post-mortem. Duncan was now where he should have been long before, in a cell unable to harm another innocent person. He wouldn't make it out of prison this time. He later received three consecutive life sentences. He was looked into for involvement in numerous other disappearances, sexual crimes and murders of children. One of these being the kidnapping and murder of a young boy called Anthony Martinez out of California. A partial thumbprint of Duncan's was found on duct tape near the scene. Two more life sentences were added for his murder. He had admitted to murdering the young boy of a rock. He had confessed to Shasta that he had also murdered two young girls, Sammy Joe White and Carmen Cubias, in 1996. Duncan died from brain cancer in 2021, and there are still likely many crimes out there that he was responsible for. Duncan posted to a blog titled the fifth nail. It is pretty disturbing, but delves into the thoughts of this predator and him being paranoid following the crimes. He talks extensively about other crimes and gives reasons like, I lash back out at society for depriving me of my youthful prime years. Along with, for example, Anthony Martinez's murder, he says, I wanted the crime to be shocking and bold in order to show the desperation I felt. The blog posts I mentioned are deeply grotesque when it comes to Duncan explaining how he kidnapped children. Anthony Martinez is one especially. He stepped in front of his younger brother, whom Duncan was trying to take. He got taken instead. They are all graphic and upsetting, so read them at your own discretion. Fortunately, Shasta Groni survived, which seems to be a rarity in these types of cases. Her instinct to show sympathy to her kidnapper saved her life, and I'm glad that she made it out alive to help police capture this depraved monster. Duncan is no longer here, but there are still many scumbags around like him, being released early to recommit heinous crimes with little regard for other human life. Hopefully anyone watching this video can realise these dangers, especially if they have young children. Being aware of your surroundings and monitoring suspicious people was the breakthrough that helped solve this case. This has been the serial killer story of Joseph Edward Duncan III. As always, thanks for watching.